Hey guys, it's Ari from EntermedSchool.com. Today we are going to answer question number 34 of the IMA 2019. And this question is very important and talking about the effect of carbon dioxide in the blood. And it is talking about a process called a Bohr effect. Bohr effect is t basically telling us in a diagram the affinity of oxygen to the hemoglobin of the blood cells based on the acidity of the surroundings. So we do know when we have a lower pH, we will have lower affinity to oxygen, and we have higher pH, we will have higher affinity to oxygen. Which basically makes sense because if you think about it, muscles working muscles will release plenty of carbon dioxide into the blood because they respire a lot. And when you have an area with a lot of carbon dioxide that encountering water, for example, that naturally exists in the vivo and in the surroundings of the muscle, you will have many different acids occur And for sure, you will have a decrease in pH for the surroundings. So we do want a lower affinity of oxygen for the hemoglobin because only then the hemoglobin will release the oxygen in this area that is low in pH and will bound carbon dioxide back and will take the carbon dioxide back to the lungs. We should also know that dissolved carbon dioxide in the plasma is only about 10% of the plasma. A protein bound, which is called actually carbinohemoglobin, is only about 30% of the transportation of carbon dioxide back to the alveoli of the lungs. And chemically modified carbon dioxide, which is carbon dioxide that turned into bicarbonate, is actually 60% of our transportation to the alveoli, which means we have free carbon dioxide, 10%, protein bound, carbomino, hemoglobin, 30%, and chemically modified, which means bicarbonate, 60%. So the majority of carbon dioxide transported in the blood is in the form of carbinohemoglobin. This is not correct. Increasing the partial pressure of oxygen makes it more likely that hemoglobin will release its oxygen is not correct. At a low partial pressure of oxygen, myoglobin is less saturated with oxygen than hemoglobin. Basically, myoglobin, myoglobin has a very high affinity to oxygen and it helps to store and keep oxygen inside the muscles and it saves to actually save the oxygen inside the muscle and to release it when we need it immediately for the muscles to respire. So because myoglobin has much higher affinity, we can expect that a low partial pressure of oxygen, we will have less hemoglobin with oxygen, but we will have more myoglobin, more saturated myoglobin than hemoglobin. So C is not correct. Blood living active muscles that are respiring aerobically will contain hydrogen carbonate, ions and raised levels of lactic acid. Lactic acid is the result of anaerobically respiring in the glycolysis metabolic pathway. So we won't have higher level of lactic acid when we respire aerobically. When we respire anaerobically, we will have to convert pyruvate to lactic acid in order to regenerate NAD plus to work again in the glycolysis metabolic pathway. This is when lactic acid actually accumulate in the working muscles when we reach a point that the Krebs cycle is overfilled and pyruvate can enter the mitochondria in order to turn into acetyl-CoA and to keep going inside the Krebs cycle. We will have to find a different way to convert its pyruvate into something else and we will have to regenerate NAD in order to keep the glycolysis working and to keep bringing energy to the working cell 
anaerobically working cell. So basically A, inactive tissue, where the carbon dioxide co concentration is high, hemoglobin has a low affinity for oxygen. Even if you don't know the other answers, like I just ex explained about the lactic acid and stuff, you should know that in active tissues, where you have more carbon dioxide, you will have a lower pH, and therefore you will have lower affinity to oxygen of the hemoglobin. And this is our answer.